Thank you for joining me today for Just a Thought. We are still in Psalm 23. We're taking every phrase, uh, phrase by phrase, taking the Psalms phrase by phrase. And we will always read from the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And it brings us to the next phrase here that we'll focus our attention on today. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'd like to focus... Uh, on this goodness and what the Bible has to say about goodness very briefly. Uh, this is certainly not an exhaustive study. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, what the Spirit produces, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Against such there is no law. There's no uh, holding back on these, if you will, one of those fruits of the Spirit is goodness. Goodness. It's, it's being good. And what is promised to us, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, there's times in our lives that, that we feel like God's against us. We certainly feel like the world is against us. And, and, and that God just doesn't see what we're going through. You go read Psalm 22 in verse 1 where Christ says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God has been through the trenches. He's gone through uh, the, the horrors of what humanity can do even though he was God. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ understands and in regard to this goodness in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So Paul writing you know, to the, those in Ephesians, somewhat kind of like those in Ephesus, that the, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. There is no darkness in God. No shadow of turning. In fact, as James would indicate, as John would indicate that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is not against us. In fact, we read over in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? That is, God's goodness his forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. We may suffer the consequences of our actions, but that is only to reinforce even further that we need God. We need to choose a better path, and it's not our own. It is the path of righteousness which God has laid out. To follow in His Son's footsteps and so on, and we can be a people who despise the riches and goodness, the long-suffering, the forbearance of God. And just in such rebellion against Him, accounting to Him all evil that happens in the world, when it's just not true. We see over in Romans chapter 11 and verse 22, Therefore consider the goodness of and severity of God. Now God will pour his wrath out upon the sons of disobedience one day. Justice will be served. But his heart is still of one that calls us to repentance. To change our ways and to follow him. To submit to him. To be obedient to him. But there's two sides of God. His goodness. And so many preachers today. Especially in the denominational world. So many focus only on the goodness of God. They don't see the severity of God. They don't see the consequences of their misaction, their disobedience. 
And so they preach all this goodness of God, mercy of God, grace of God, and it, it skews their thinking about God and in the just seeing only the positive. And they don't see the quote-unquote negative. I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, that, that, that there is, that God is a, is a jealous God. That he is one that demands obedience. And so we see here in Romans chapter 11 and verse 22, Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell severity, <laughs> disobeyed, transgressed against him. He was severe on them. But toward you, goodness, if, conditional, if you continue in his Goodness, you see, it's not our own righteousness by which we live. It is the righteousness of God. And so, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And he's talking to Gentiles. He's talking to you and to me. At least I take for granted that you're most likely not a Jew. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 14, now I myself am confident, Paul writing, concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness. Of course, that's uh, coming from God. Filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, this idea of admonishing someone is correcting them, correcting them with love. It's not severe. It's not a bashing. It's actually kind of the idea that you put your arm around someone and say, you can do better than that. I know you got it in, it, in you. You can do it. Yeah, you didn't do very well. You messed up. But you can repent of that. You can change your ways. You can put it behind you and you can move forward. It's almost the, the conversation that God has with Cain. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? But if you do not, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. But you must control it. The potential for us is always there to leave the goodness of God. To acquire our own goodness. I'll live the way I dictate. That's not going to end well. And in the process of, of us living our lives, what we learn here, according to Romans 15 and verse 14, is we can lean on one another. We can help one another. He says, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another, to correct, to, to instruct, to, to help one another in this walk of life. The last verse I'd like to consider in this idea of the goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 11. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling or of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. It's his goodness. It's not our goodness. Surely goodness. It's God's goodness. On our behalf. He teaches us how we should live our lives for our own good. The restrictions, the things that we can't do, we should not do, we should not participate in. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. They're, they're destructive. The things that he would initiate or have us to initiate in our lives and, and, and have abundantly, you might say. That, that, that there's no restriction. We can just uh, consume more and more and more of the fruit of the Spirit. Will enable us to be more like him day by day to acquire his goodness. May God bless you to... Follow in His goodness. And if you do so, it will last you the rest of your life. you got to love it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days 
of my life. We give God the praise and glory. May he bless you.